Hello everyone, myself Dr. Pooja and today we are here to do the recall questions of physiology which came in INICET May 2023. First thing first, those questions are given to me by some students who gave the uh, exam, right? And there may be some bias in the question language or in the options. We are going to focus on the concepts per se, right? So if such question comes or that came, so what student told me was the potassium value was given as intracellular potassium value. Now understand whatever values we are considering, those are the serum values and not of the cell values, okay? So the anion gap formula is cation minus anion, right? So sodium that is going to be taken into the consideration since the serum sodium was given, as 145 intracellular potassium, we are not going to consider it. The chloride was given as 80 and bicarbonate 30. So, if we put the values, the answer that we get over here is 35. So, answer is going to be 35 over here. Let's move on to the next question. Which amino acid not used for the synthesis of the hormone? Now, understand the phenyl aniline ultimately is going to form the tyrosine. And tyrosins, they are helpful uh, into the formation of catecholamines and the tyrosine is also helpful in the formation of thyroid hormone. Tryptophan, yes, it is again important in the formation of catecholamines and uh, the glycine, if we talk about, it is not helpful at all in the any hormone formation and they ask which is not used. So that's why the answer over here is option D. Let's move on. Next question was of endo. Hormones act via Jackstat pathway. Now, even if you do not know about the leptin, you can easily exclude the other options and get to the right answer. How? We know that aldosterone is going to act via the cytoplasmic receptors since it is lipid soluble, right? So, cytoplasmic receptors, this is over over here, cytoplasmic and not the Jackstat pathway, right? Calcitonin and the vasopressin. They are going to act via GPCR and that to cyclic AMP. Now, the calcitonin is for sure it is going to act via cyclic AMP. And what about the vasopressin? That depends on which receptor it is going to act, right? If we talk in terms of V2 receptors, then it will be helpful in the opening of or the uh, insertion of aquaporin 2 channels. And definitely, this is going to act via cyclic AMP, right? Now, if we talk about V1, that helpful in the contraction of the afferent and efferent arteriole. And whenever we talk about afferent efferent constriction, that is going to be IP3 DAG. And that means it is going to act via again GPCR, IP3 DAG, right? But not through the JAKSTAT pathway. The JAKSTAT pathway through which uh, hormone is going to act, that is nothing but the leptin, right? Let's move on. Which of the following stimulate bitter taste? Now, understand that we talk usually about the taste in the special senses, right? So, what we talk? Aldehyde. Aldehyde amino acid. They usually give us the sweet sensation, right? And amino acid can give us umami taste also. Monosodium glutamate. You remember that? Monosodium glutamate right? Hydrogen ions, we always say that the hydrogen ion such as the which are present in the acids such as the citric acid, they are going to give us the sour taste and not the bitter. So, the alkaloids are going to giving us the bitter taste. Next, such kind of graph was given in the exam, right? So, now what, how you are going to identify which hypoxia it is there? <laughs> I have given the answer over here that is anemic. How? Now, look over here what is happening to the arterial and venous oxygen per deciliter, right? Oxygen, ml per deciliter and that is decreasing over here. The content is decreasing and not the partial pressure of oxygen. Don't get confused with that, okay? So, the partial pressure is same over here. That is not reducing, right? And partial pressure, we know that the PO2, PCO2, they are dependent on the dissolved form and not on the hemoglobin bound form of the oxygen or any other gases, right? So, uh, first thing that is giving us the hint, right? If the hypoxic hypoxia would have been there, the partial pressure of oxygen decreases in this, okay? So, this cannot be the answer, right? Now, look over here, what is happening to uh, the AV difference, okay? So, AV difference in this is increased, 
right? That means what is happening over here? That AV difference decreases. That means more extraction of the oxygen, right? Because the hemoglobin is less, right? And that's why the partial pressure is going to reduce in the venous side. Whenever from the arteries, the blood passes into the capillaries and then to the vein, what is going to happen? The tissue is going to extract the more and more oxygen because the hemoglobin is delivering the less amount of oxygen. So yes, AV difference, partial pressure of oxygen uh, in the AV that is going to be increased. So we call it as AV difference in partial pressure of oxygen that is going to be increased, right? So the difference in the partial pressure is going to increase as compared to the normal. Moving on to the stagnant hypoxia, what is going to happen in the stagnant hypoxia? In the stagnant hypoxia, yes, the AV difference of the partial pressure of oxygen is going to increase, but understand what is going to happen to the content of the oxygen. Now, if you see that this is the ml per deciliter is nothing but the content of oxygen. The content of oxygen is reduced over here because of less hemoglobin. Right, but in the stagnant hypoxia, the problem is in the circulatory system and not in the any other system. So over here, the content of the hemoglobin in the stagnant hypoxia will be normal; it won't reduce. Okay, so that cannot be the answer over here. What is going to happen in the histotoxic hypoxia? The problem is in the tissues; it is not able to utilize the oxygen. So this is also cannot be the answer. So the answer over here is anemic hypoxia. So, this is how the normal graph should look like. When we talk in terms of Haldens effect, we discuss this, okay? But remember, this is the saturation of oxygen percentage and not the content, okay? That's the difference. Let's move on. This is a very easy question in the cystic fibrosis. Uh, which channel defect is there? We all know that it is the chloride defect. Some said that it was given a long case scenario and CFTR gene was given and then they have asked, uh, even if they are asking about the CFTR gene or cystic fibrosis, both are going to be uh, having the same answer that is chloride. Which of the following is incorrect match? Now, understand they were given the matches and you have to identify the incorrect match. Okay. Now, understand when we talk about gastrin, they are released from the G cells and from the stomach, some said that antrum was given in the pyloric antrum was given in the option, right, for the gastric. That is also correct. The CCK from I cell, that is also correct, secretin S cells and they have given the options also, that is from where sites basically location is given, that is also right. Now, over here, they have written the motilin from M cells. Now, understand there are two types of cells. The motilin is released from MO type of cells and not the M cells. M stands for microfold cells. Where they are present? They are present in the ilium. And why they are there? Especially they are present at the location where uh, you have the pears patches, right? So, pears patches. Now, they are going to help us in what thing? They're going to help us in the immunity. What they're going to do in the pairs patches, they are helping us to identify the antigen and transfer the antigen and not in the release of motilin. So, this is the incorrect match. Okay, you have to be careful. This is the M cell and not the MO cells. Okay, let's move on. All of the following vessels show wind castle effect. What is wind castle effect? That the arteries, whichever are elastic, or they have elastin fibers, what they do whenever the pressure is applied on their walls, they stretch like aorta. So, aorta is going to stretch like this. What is going to happen during the ejection? The pressure is going to be applied and it is going to be stretched. And once the ejection is over, what is going to happen? Again, it will come back to its normal position and whatever blood was there into that stretched aorta that is going to come into the circulation and because of that we do have diastolic blood pressure. Now understand for that we require elastic type of arteries which are having more elastic fibers okay and they are present in the aorta and large arteries right such as carotid pulmonary artery all these things. Now understand if we have to choose between the renal artery and radial artery. Renal artery is the direct branch of the aorta, right? And the radial artery is more in the periphery. 
and it is containing less amount of elastin. So most appropriate answer over here is the radial artery. Towards more periphery you go, less will be the elastin fibers, right? Let's move on. Uh, which of the following has maximum thermogenic effect? We know that whenever we eat proteins, what is going to happen? More and more metabolism is stimulated. So metabolic rate is increased by 15 to 30 percent after the eating of or digestion of protein. So that's why the answer over here is going to be proteins and not the fats or carbohydrates. Okay. Next question: Blood pressure changes in the radial artery were measured and the blood pressure was raised okay in the valsalva maneuver is because of now understand that you might get confused over here just see at the options carefully volume if the volume is also increasing the pressure cannot increase because we know the boyle's law that if the pressure is increasing the volume will decrease and vice versa right so this cannot be the answer now what is happening during valsalva is we are putting a lot of positive pressure in the thorax okay we are doing the expiration against closed glottis so intrathoracic pressure per se is increased but immediately the left ventricular pressure is not going to increase rather because of the compression the aortic pressure will increase right so this is the most appropriate answer and if we see the nature's article diagram it is also showing us mean aortic pressure during the valus salva maneuver immediately it is going to increase right and heart rate are going to decrease right let's move on to the next arrange the parts of the sarcomere from periphery to center okay so see over here the diagram in the periphery we know that the z lines are going to be there so first is z line right as you come towards the middle you are going to have the i band but i band is not there in the option so leave it then who is going to come in the way this is none other than the a band right and after that yes we do have h zone first and then the m line so h zone and then the m line right so this is going to be the order right so z a h m so z line first then z a h and m so over here the answer is going to be one three four two you have to arrange them right let's move on to the next question which of the following is true statement regarding skeletal muscle now we do not know what were the exact options but these were like this extracellular calcium is not important in the contraction now understand this is a true statement okay why it is true because when we talk about the cicr what is cicr calcium induced calcium release in that this is going to be important for example if i draw a t tubule over here and let's say this is the L tubule over here in which we are going to have R, Y, R channels. And what are the channels which are going to be present over here? DHPR channels, right? Now, as soon as the action potential travels downward, what is going to happen? They are going to stimulate these DHPR channels. And as soon as they are going to get stimulated, they are mechanically attached to the R, Y, R. And then only from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the calcium is going to come, right? And that is going to help us in the contraction. But if you talk about extracellular calcium, the DHPR is just getting activated and they're helping us in the opening of RYR. But it is not allowing the extracellular calcium to come in, right? So this is not important. That's true, right? Calcium release mainly from the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria never releases the calcium, right? It is either from the ECF or from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, right? So this is wrong. Calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, that's true. Some people say that there was the option intracellular calcium. That also means the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That is the only source, intracellularly, right? Voltage-gated calcium channels on the sarcolemma has no role in EC coupling. Now, understand that voltage-gated cha calcium channels, they are nothing but DHPR. Yes, they are calcium channels. It's just that they're not going to open up in the case of skeletal muscle right they're going to open up in the cases of smooth muscles and cardiac muscles right so yes this is nothing but the dhpr channel but they said that there is no role they have the role if they are not getting activated they won't be able to act on the rir and they are not able to open the rir right so this is the wrong statement so only correct statement over here is one and three 
Let's move on. This is the easiest question possible in the INICT. What maneuver he is doing when we go from the lateral side towards the medial, right? Towards and the great toe. That is nothing but the Babinski sign, right? So, stereognosis is identifying the objects via closing the eyes only via the touch, texture, and size of the object. Asterisks is for the flapping trims, right? Gentastic maneuver, what we do, if the tone is not proper or we are not able to see the DTR, we ask the subject to clench his teeth or do this movement, right? So, that is the gentastic. So, over here, it is the bubbins. Now, moving on, in respiratory tract, the airway pressure is zero at which of following lung volume. Now, understand, to FRC, we also call it as relaxation volume. And whatever pressure of the lung is there, we call it as relaxation pressure, right? Why we call it as? So, because it is zero, right? If I show you one diagram over here, look over here, the airway pressure is given, right? And lung capacity is given. At you, If you see at the uh, FRC, what is the pressure? It is the zero. Why? Because the lung and the chest wall, whatever transmural pressures are there across them, they are going to balance each other. And that's why it is called as the relaxation pressure. Why? Because the muscles are getting relaxed over here completely right it is not the rv tlc or ic it is the frc moving on to the next question a prolific system of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is present in endocrine cells acting through now understand whenever we talk in terms of smooth endoplasmic reticulum we know it is helpful in the lipids and steroid synthesis right yes they may help us in the uh, post translation of the proteins also but it cannot be the answers over here so answer over here is steroids only right that is the most appropriate answer so that's all from my side and i'll leave you with this message that don't settle for average bring your best to the moment then whether it fails or succeed at least you know you gave all you had thank you very much Thank you.